Welcome to the Nameless Voices Podcast. This is episode 36, the three-year anniversary of the show running, and we are one week late, but we will never be late again if we can help it. My name's Nanashi. Hey. I am, I'll be your host for the evening, and I apologize in advance for whatever this show is going to be. Joining me is a menagerie of gaggle fucking card floppers. Starting off, we have a brand new one by the name of AI Ignister. Hello. He's a hellion that finally came back. It's Blitz. Sup, bitches. I was off fucking your wives and your husbands. And I think also your demigods. So uh, you might want to check your uh, demigod register in a few hours. Mm -hmm. I'm a religious heathen. We have the Yugi memer himself, Connor Lockhart. I will be today's horny police. We might need that. We might. Thank you. He brings the unga bunga to gaming. It's Kenny the Caveman. So I'm not horny. I just want thick, juicy thighs. It's just universal there, okay? Prepare the bunga. It's universal for both, whatever way you go. Thick thighs, save lives. Prepare thy bunking. We have another new member by the name of Lone. And he's quiet. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. I can hear you. There must he's, be something yeah. wrong with this core. Fine. Must be. Yeah, but I said hi. We have our fellow furry Yugi tuber, Mr. Ori Kalkos. Yeah, would you like your otter steamed, roasted, or cooked well done? Because frick me, this heat is unbearable. Yeah. <laughs> I like it steamed. <laughs> he is the thing that goes bump in the night, it's Raven. Hello, I, I just recently subscribed to Yabel's prank channel, and I advise all of you to do the same. No. 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 Oh. He was once reborn, but he has been reborn into Renegade Wings. With 20% more vegans. We have our worst nightmare by name, Tim Brick. I am the reason why Atlanteans suck. And he is here in all his protogenic glory, it's Zivuth. Today, I'm in your screen and sit off in the wall. Okay, so first things first. How in the world are we all doing today? Um, um, we're, right. we're cooking? Well, Good. still fighting with a cold. Ah. That's right, you mentioned that. I'm, I'm, currently, I'm currently recovering from the emotional damage of getting... N Nibiru hit with a kaiju, hit with a golem, and hit with a sphere mode all in the same duel. Subscribe that to the nice, but I don't... Yeah, you got dogpile right there. Uh, yeah. Hey, that sounds nice, but uh, what's a Yu-Gi-Oh card? I only know magic now. I'm not... I, I only play speed duels, by the way. I'm never coming back to the original game. Fuck that shit. <laughs> okay. after, wa after watching what... After watching what this format has turned into, and how bad they did the Mega Tens, Fuck Yu-Gi-Oh for the time being. Okay. okay. I mean, that's fair. You could be, you could yeah. be boiling like me and Ori. Yeah. This yeah, is this is also why I'm playing Shadowverse. Not that blind. Hey, something fabulous happened happened to me on Master Duel tonight. Some I had the perfect spot up, and some and some dude decided to play the Mikanko Double Edged Sword FDK. Oh lord! Oh, I, Ooh, I oh actually, my god. I actually, um, I actually got out of that with the, in the dumbest way possible. The heroes have um an equip spell. Uh huh. Wait, they, oh yeah, um, they do. Yeah. Oh. Yes, yeah, Cyclone Blade. I equip it All to, I equip okay. it to my dominance. When they attack, I go Cyclone Blade effect. Pop the double edged sword. Ouch. Um, yeah, that'll um, do it. It's, it says when you battle. When the monster battles, you destroy a spell or trap on the field. Yeah, but not everyone has that card. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm gonna be straight and say Double Edged Sword has to go in Master Duel. <laughs> I don't know if it needs to go just yet, but if Makanko continues to be a problem, then probably. Yeah. Oh, so I'm just reading Cyclone Blade. You can just feel the limited mystical space typhoon reading those kinds of effects. This was probably made around the time that MST was actually limited. Maybe. Yeah. That's uh, what I said. 
gonna be terrible. <sighs> Alright, let's Why uh, did we ruin things we love? Because we can't have nice things. <laughs> True. Mm. We could have probably the most balanced archetype in the game and some asshole would just try and ruin it for everyone. Well yeah. Basically. That's what that's that's true. Uh, Basically. I mean someone managed to use B troopers to make Millennium Ice Strict, Mirror Jade, and the Grapha Fusion, so what do I know? I'm sorry? You want to repeat oh, that? <laughs> I'll remember to post the video after the stream ends. Sounds we'll like a good idea. That, I think that, we all found something going. to watch after. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks for the after show. Yeah. By the way, Nanashi, I didn't do it what what I showed on the on the Tron Master tool screenshot. I'm sorry, what? Uh you didn't see the screenshot? I saw the screenshots Wait, you dropped earlier, yeah. Yeah, I didn't do it. You didn't? I... No, you got I, it you got I... it done to you. Ah. I didn't dismantle the the ultra rare cards. I don't know. The problem no. is I need I need 320 instead of 270 now, so it wouldn't be enough. Hard to say. I, I've taken a break from Master Duel for that reason, among others. Not that I blame you. Mm -mm. I just yeah, kind of yeah. come and go with Bro. it now. Yeah. And hey, yeah, imagine I'm... playing a game with a card so powerful it has nearly 100% usage. Ooh, yeah. And I just focus on the story stuff yeah. and then call it a day. Yeah, Nanashi, no, no, I get what you mean. Alternatives are that you can't craft only get via packs, and when you are super unlucky, you you just spend thousands of, of farm with gems and don't have them anymore for the good cards. And the, mm -hmm. and the new archetypes get so many ultra rare cards that you can't afford them anymore as free to play player. Add to it that the older archetypes and texts that you want to use are extremely rare for no explainable reason. Yeah, well, like they are even well, in text. Now, speaking of older archetypes, they really, really, they really had to fucking miss one battling boxer card in that fucking battling boxer set, dude. Oh, I, I, I hate oh. that seventh force is not a battling boxer card. No, I'm yeah. talking about. Spar, they didn't reprint it as a rare and it oh, became a two dollar card. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That shit pissed me off. I'm like, I was about to go purchase everything and I seen Spar's $5. I'm like, yeah, I'll get back on the Yu Gi Oh! Spar's not in there. I'm like, <laughs> I, I am intentionally not buying that deck until you reprint oh. that card. Yeah. Guess what I'm, I, I guess what I'm dueling right now. What? What? The new U Bell deck. Of course. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. We've got oh. plenty to talk about when we get to that point. But of course. Speaking first thing you build though, I did I, I did post your funny reaction in the podcast shit. Yeah, yeah you did. I one. saw it earlier. Just remember, I'll have to bring Liss out again if you'll be horny. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, let's Demon's get into horny twenty four seven. You can't do shit to me. Exactly. Alright, let's get into some uh in topics of interest real quick and get the show rolling. First off, uh, some video game news. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of trailers and such for new video games coming out, but I'm kind of interested in, in the new South Park Snow Day game. I didn't know there was even a new Park, South Park game coming out. It basically yeah, looks yeah, like... If you ever played the very first uh, South Park video game, during the Thanksgiving special, I think it was, where you have to throw snowballs at the turkeys. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah I know what you're talking about. I've seen reviews on that. It looks like they took that visual engine, improved it immensely, and then gave it the rule set of Fractured Butthole. Hmm. <laughs> oh, didn't they have another? God. Didn't they have another? Didn't they have another game that was another old game alongside Snow Day? Or Snick, uh, Stick tripping? of Truth. Well, yeah, there was Stick of Truth, but I believe um, there was another old one. Yeah. Amazingly the, the enough. Fractured Butthole. Yeah, that's why no, I said. Amazing. No, not, oh, no, that's that's this, that's after the stick. I meant like an old one, like around the same time as like Snow Day, the game that Nanashi was talking about. I think they did, but I don't remember what it's called. I'll have to look that up later. 
Oh, um, it's called South Park. I can do it right now. Four. <laughs> oh, uh, thank you, Rom. He dropped a link to the snow South Park Snow Day game trailer. <laughs> Something mm -hmm. else to watch later. We're having so much fun watching stuff later. I'm just gonna drop show. my commanders and I play real fast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Uh, next on my list, we now know about the Nintendo Switch 2 that's coming, and I believe its intro price was gonna be what, 400 bucks? Mm. Oh, that's not that bad. Yeah. yeah it's Isn't also it? gonna, supposedly Reasonable. gonna be. It's also supposedly gonna be backwards compatible and have 16 gigs of RAM. Wow, that man. is very reasonable. Ooh. I oh, might, I nice. might actually, that's, that's I might actually betray price. Sony for once in my life. Well, for one, I hope it has, <laughs> I hope it has some um, uh, system transfer so you can transfer your. Uh, to Ali, there are it's rumors weird. that the Switch Two is already finished. That 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 was even behind closed door at the Gamescom. Ah. Mm -hmm. Well, all I know is if they release it either this year or next year, it's gonna like. Go to it's gonna be like a seven hundred dollar game system. The way inflation is. I'm for a bunch I guess we'll see. Games. Because because in this economy, who can a fucking afford a damn dinner, let alone a switch? Tell me about this it. Is I mean, I can't apparently. <laughs> okay, so uh, next up on the list, I haven't seen it yet, but I've been hearing a lot of people talking about the One Piece live action series supposedly being good. So I've heard, yeah. It really it is. is yeah, I heard I a mean, lot of shit being flung at it by the trailers, but from I was about to say, what I've heard is actually more confident. critical find oh, things oh. good, then oh. that it says a lot. Honestly, yeah, so I one just saw... Fan, I, as a One Piece fan, I approve. <laughs> Honestly, I just saw Netflix anime live action remake and just thought, is this going to be another shit show? And just no, give it no, to what I was thinking. I actually, no, hold up, but, hold up. What's Netflix? I, I pirate shit. Uh huh. No, but I actually, I actually looked it up. Netflix was in a panic. They didn't want the same stuff to happen with Cowboy Bebop. Welcome to the ouch. So Oda literally demanded that he make sure everything is perfect. Yeah, right. well, because he, he oversaw be everything, hired every actor personally. Because, okay. because okay, I, I was very skeptical of them doing any more live action remakes given their um, track record. I was yeah. very disappointed with Death Note. Well, their Death Note. Very disappointed with Full Metal Alchemist, though I fi though I came in knowing it was going to be a steamy pile of dog shit. So, what mm -hmm. hype did mm -hmm. I have at that point? And I feel like the only live action series that I was very hyped for from them or have heard about was the live action Avatar The Last Airbender because they got the original directors to work on this. Mm. I, I, I still I still would probably be a little more cautious. Oh, no, I am. It's like on one hand, they got the directors, the original directors of the animated Avatar to work with them. So chances are if they're following the actual source material it won't be like m night Shyamalan's bullshit from a few years back <laughs> but netflix yeah, is man. also an unpredictable company so i'm still gonna have to keep my fingers crossed here yeah. again oh uh, what's funny is that i actually saw the um the live action avatar movie first um as opposed to the actual um, oh cartoon. god I, I feel bad for um, you <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I I watched the fucking live action movie you, you, when it was you know, uh, in the you know, and I, I, I regret it. You know what really pissed <laughs> me off about that movie, aside from everything else? Um, according to M. Night Shyamalan, firebenders can't make their own fire. They have to bend pre-existing fire. And it's like oh, well, they're, break, they're break they're break they're breaking continuity with that alone and it's like dude so the time I saw Zuko make his own fire or that time I saw Iro literally breathe fire living up to the whole dragon part of his name was I just tripping balls when that happened? What the fuck? No, <laughs> they, they couldn't they, oh no no here's the deal. They, 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 they didn't have couldn't. one point in the movie. Did I couldn't hey, remember they, when they, they said it so fast. They couldn't fucking edit it, so they came up with more bullshit. Get better CGI. Oh god! What 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 made me what made me more appalled though was the scene where they have to rescue the Earthbenders from that one island. 
and you're sitting there thinking, oh, yeah. okay, okay, yeah, what could what, what 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 could they be surrounded by that's prohibiting them from earth bending? And the yeah. M.I. Shyamalan's like, well, it's earth. They, it's they can't earth, earth not bend metal, earth. Not wood, earth. <laughs> Add to it. And yet, that... it's not the worst part it's of like... that scene. The mm -hmm. worst it's part like... is it taking five people to throw a rock. Yes, I was yeah, about to say that. Like... Yes, that was the worst part, but the. <laughs> But they're like, oh, you're sitting there thinking, okay, where could they have taken these people? Surely they stick with the steel ship, right? Where they have them working and can't bend. No, no it's just an island with plenty of earth for them to bend. Oh, and guess yeah. what? In, in the original, one person could at least earth bend something actually sensible. But now you have to have five people doing weird circus dances just for one pebble. <laughs> Okay, yeah, um, so guys, hang on, hang on, guys, hang on. Uh, Ziveth wants to say something real quick. Okay, yeah, before we get completely driven away from the topic, which we already did. Um, yeah, what I wanted to say when we already talk about the One Piece live action is, is that I actually like the side story with Garp we get so early, since most people just complained about it. Um, I mean, as is, it is nice told. Um, the only thing that that bugged me at Gap that was directly at the beginning at the Roger flashback that he handled Roger like a dude. He would never do that in the anime or manga. They Absolutely were actually true. rivals and not foes. Absolutely true. Okay, like so... Gap is. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. Move on. Oh, okay. Uh, well, the next thing on my list is actually just something we can all collectively laugh at. We've all heard that Elon wants to try and remove the blocking function from Twitter. Yes. yes. Oh, oh, my God. God. oh, my God. All, all I gotta say is if he removes that, I'm making... That's impossible. Off. No, no, no. All I gotta say is if he takes that off, it's going to leave both Google Play and the iPhone Play Store... And if I have to deal with the trolls who fucked with me, I'll just fuck with their IP address. I just, I just straight up went to the original post because he was like, I don't understand the block functions. Like, dude, you're on a site filled with shitty crypto spam bots and a whole bunch of trolls and bullies. What do you, for someone who brags about having the biggest brain on the planet, what, what the fuck do you mean you don't know what the dude, block functions the fir are? The first day, the first day he took over, everyone was spamming the hard R and I was losing it. I was about to delete my account. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, it, there's three things I want to go over real quick on this subject. One, he legally, supposedly, cannot remove it. Because as yeah, if he does no, so, he it'll can't. be removed from every public store. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's two, not what I was saying earlier. two, if he could do, even if he could do that, the mute function does the exact same thing. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And three... Supposedly, the whole reason that he wanted to remove it in the first place is because he found out how many people have him blocked. Yeah, dude, oh, it was yeah. really just petty. Uh, the answer yeah. is, like, off of Twitter. I wanted to bring up another thing. So, because of Elon's shenanigans on Twitter, there was a new social media site being worked on called Blue Sky. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. people have been switching to. I heard about that. Yeah, I mean, you gotta be, but of, you gotta yeah, be invited. You gotta be invited to go to it. Yeah, it's basically I mean, the same we process talk about the guy who, who you, changed you the logo you. and renamed Twitter just just out of BS. Yep. <laughs> so blue What's sky, it again? you essentially Blue's have to. Yeah, you, you download it and after put it in like your email or whatnot, they send you a they send you a code and put you on a little wait list. You have to wait a bit to actually enter it, but hey, at this point, any alternative is better than what we currently have, as far as Twitter goes. The sad part what? is that's basically what happened with Pillow Fort. What? What? Uh, well, so uh, because of the the fact that Elon literally cannot do it, the community note popped up under his own tweet. So what I'm saying is, recipe to cum. Rest in peace to community notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That guy is laughing about his own show but that is sad. Yeah. yeah. At this well, point, Elon Musk mm -hmm. needs to be sacrificed to a volcano and we can just all listen to his screams. And I could just fucking record no. him and use it as my ringtone. Here's the thing I still have with Elon. This is coming from the dude who, whose R&D department thought it was okay to let the man build a flamethrower in... I see nothing wrong with building flamethrowers. Like, uh, I got, don't, I got, don't trust... Cut off. I don't trust Elon with anything hot, crazy. I don't trust Elon with anything hot, sharp, or pointy. You see uh, I mean, Elon that's running a bar. He launched some satellites up there. Nine times out of ten, those satellites are going to do something illegal. Is he going to get into trouble over it? No, because he's a crack whore Euro cock. Okay. <laughs> well, moving yeah, on to the final topic before we get into the card game stuff. I don't use that word often, but golly, I hate him so much. Good to know. Uh, last thing I was going to talk about I mean, is some... It's not, but to him, I mean it too. Uh-huh. I was going to mention a couple of interesting movies that are coming out. Uh, we got trailers for Good Burger 2, Chicken Run 2, and a Monopoly movie. Oh my Wait, god. No. Oh, oh, god. I, I, actually, I, I actually did hear about the Good Burger movie. I That's actually on my list of stuff to actually see. I don't know if you guys watch wrestling, but the uh, name right should you say something, or? I don't watch wrestling I mean, personally. Oh, I, I don't either. I don't. I watch wrestling, but I wasn't going to watch the pay per view because I don't agree with the countries that visit them. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. fuck CM Punk. No. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa! What he do? He's been supporting trans rights. And that makes him a good person because. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he snapped, and then AEW is a shithole anyway. It's a piece of shit company. Same as WWE. Only thing I actually watch now is hold, TNA. Hold on, hold on now. Let's go ahead and rephrase it. WB now isn't that bad. Yes, they did some bad things with Saudi Arabia, but we have my boy Paul Levesque. Yes, and they went to a they went to a country where they literally cane you for being the same sex, the end of the same sex. Two countries. Hey, hey we never Damn. said we were we believe in their politics. We're just there to entertain yeah. them. So, and also it's my boy Paul Levesque. That's my guy. Okay, I hang love on. Triple H. Let's go ahead and let Ziveth continue his point. He's he has the floor. Yeah, thanks. Of course. Yeah, like Rom already posted it, and and it's uh -huh. still, it still somehow feels like a nightmare. I don't know. I that day I was I was already sitting in the train on my way to work when I opened my smartphone for the first time and the first thing you read in the news that you that your profit all-time wrestler is gone and you and I first thought that must be a fake news or some other joke I think I know I think I know what you're you talking don't. about though. yeah I understand how you feel honestly we've lost a lot of good people this year just completely out yeah. of nowhere, and he is just right at the top of that list. We lost Smash Mouth's lead singer for fuck's sake. Oh, God. Dude, he was he was just thirty six and died. Jay Briscoe was. 39. You know, you know what's even Terry sadder. Terry, we lost Terry. And, and yeah, thirty six is way too young. He it really is. Mm -hmm. No one deserves to go out that young. And after you oh, heard yeah, what. Sure. What WWE actually had plans for him to let him fight against Roman Reigns and have, and having him the push of his life, and then he passes away before that. It's oh, a that, damn shame. That is, yeah, that think, is a damn shame. I think for us, it sucks because if anybody doesn't know, he has a brother that's in the same age range, uh, Bo uh -huh. Dallas. I will always remember Are we him. Are talking as about Wyatt? Few. Yeah, that shit was fucking bad. Like shit hit me out of. Dude, like he was, he was. He was, he was bought and me to be the next Undertaker. Yeah, that that why that why shit hit me hard. Like I couldn't fuck, I couldn't fucking eat right. I couldn't sleep right. I fucking broke down during the tribute on both days. That shit hit me hard because he was my favorite. That guy's only a year older than me. Mm. Oh wow! Yeah, he, he got, he got COVID and then COVID fucked with his heart and then he went. Like when you think about it, he's not that old. He's 
pretty close to the same age as a lot of us in the server. It really makes you think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it, well, I would say sad. I'm still 10 years, 10 years away, but I get what you mean. I say the, the only thing that makes it sad more is, well, not sad, but Eric Rowan's filling it, bro. Because he didn't just lose Bray. He also, a couple years ago, lost Brody, a.k.a. Luke Harper. Yeah. But now they're in wrestling heaven. Both the two, the the, cho the 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 one, the, the chosen one, Bro Brody Lee, and Bray Wyatt. That would be the greatest match of all time in heaven. Where Terry Funk is the referee, because why not? Because we need Terry Funk to do something. I just Dude, Terry hope... Funk's death hit me out of nowhere. I just I hope that Bo Dallas keeps his role as. I feel like Bo's probably at the cause the uh... JoJo. Because they had three daughters, I think. Yeah. Uh, Jojo. Uh, they had four. Home. She. Uh, well, Ray had four kids. I thought he had two. I got corrected on social media. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I think he had two from his it's previous the marriage, and then another part. two with Jojo. It really yeah. is. So. He, I'm like, he because left I was a, thinking of the two we had with Jojo. He left a wife and four me. kids behind. It, it's why I said it sucks because you don't look at like you look at the family. You look because we all know the rule is the father should. Like I say, I just hope Woodellis keeps his role as Uncle Howdy now. That this story can at least continue. I think yeah. the most emotional tribute for me was Becky Lynch's in on Raw, because after her match, she went on to tell a story about when she was starting in her first ever table match. She didn't know how to set up a table herself, and Bray helped her. Yeah, yeah he was. He's that a good story guy. was awesome. Mm-hmm. I'll probably go to positive wrestling news later on, where we talk about we're a all out because that was great. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, all mm -hmm. in the week prior, the biggest wrestling event in the world, the world. I mean, I used to like AEW until like if MJF everything like fuck that guy. MJF is I hate good. what they just... do with. I hate what they do with Omega recently, that he has to lay down for everyone now after saying that Oh my contract. god, I'm stealing this meme. Do you, like, do like, like you, you had the chance to be on the big stage by now. And that's how Tony Khan thank, thanks it to you. Yeah, what? I mean, now there's a chance that he might lose... Well, there's a chance he might lose the title of longest reigning AEW champion because MJF's only 54 days away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so by my, by point is... my point is that that Omega is forced to lose every single match now. That's well, just it's bullshit. Because... It's not bullshit because once you get the title EVP, what did Cody do with the thing that prevented him from being a world champion? He made it like a match where if he loses, he can't wrestle for a world title. So he had to make one you... that wasn't the main <laughs> title. What and he Omega, can't what did Omega... turn Kenny in the chopper now. I, I think just because at and then what did Kenny do in his reign? He had like three of the biggest belts in like the world besides New Japan because we had that one. Now that'd be impressive, but no, they wouldn't do that. And I think they give it to MJF because MJF is what people want to see. I just hate what they're doing with him with Adam Cole because <laughs> I rather them both be one both. I deals, think which we, would be great. We both talk about. Talk about different things now. Mm. Okay, we can uh, move on to another topic if you want. Yeah. Okay. Next thing on the list happens to be delving into the card games, starting right at the top actually, with Digimon. Actually, hmm? actually, before we do that, that there's one more bit of news that thing we failed to neglect. Oh, what's and that? that? And that is Charles Martinet. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What what the fuck? Fuck? Yes. Retiring, he's now retired from voicing Mario and is now a now the official Mario ambassador. Right, I heard of about course, that. Everyone made memes about Chris Pratt replacing him. Oof. I hope not. But I, me, me too. I hope that doesn't happen either. But well, supposedly they're gonna have a new. Oh yeah, that's right. They dropped a video. They were planning on dropping a video together. Uh, him and. Uh, his new voice actor, I think it was? Um, this one's just with Miyamoto. Right. But it is very wholesome at the end of the day, though. Right. Listen, Chris Pratt did not deliver on his Mario voice lines, but 
And even though the Mario Brothers Super Show was very much mid, Captain Lou would have been so much better if he was still alive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he also wrestled, too. That, too. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so well... So if he was alive to voice Mario, you could also make plenty of wrestling memes about him. That's true. <laughs> Imagine Super Mario Wrestler. Oh, I, w I would pay for that. Dude, right, so... w, Vince, Vince, Vince would not like working with Nintendo because Nintendo would fucking say, I want the money. <laughs> Alright, so let's move on to the first card game topic, shall we? Which starts off with Digimon. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, one thing I've been looking forward in the new um, BT-15 is the new bird support. Ah, uh, bird, bird. Yes. Yeah. Interesting yeah, about bird, uh, but... Mm -hmm. uh, but honestly, uh, but honestly, from BT fifteen, I'm mainly interested in that uh, crazy new machine support. Oh yeah, true that too. Um, shame um the machine demand can't evolve into like its upgraded forms, which kind of uh, sucks in all honesty. But uh, let's be real, the new Giga Drummond and Mega Drummond will still indirectly support it. True. When you guys say machine, I automatically think machines from Yu-Gi-Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> different, different machines entirely. Yeah, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that's a... Okay. I was just about to say anyway. Now actually going into the full uh, news. Uh, this month we'll finally see the release of the Resurgence booster in English, which was formerly known as Rising Winds, but it was also uber delayed for the uk release the uk well the english oh, yeah. release it's now due for the end of the month on the 29th which will of course be the main go-to support for digimon ghost game as well as some select reprints from the first five booster sets wait and uh, the reason for the delay is like back um like way back when when it was like first announced um bandai of america for some ungodly reason um said that they weren't going to include the uh reprints in the set and it says just the new um ghost game support which um had me and a few yeah which had me and a few other um players upset mm -hmm. anyway um back on topic over in japan the fifth expansion set for animal coliseum is now out with, of course, the major themes being Metal Garumon X, a purple version, Grey Snowmon, as well as the four sovereigns with Fang Longmon, or Huang Longmon, depending on your preference. And honestly, mm -hmm. I'm not looking forward to the new Melga support, because that will probably be the nail in the coffin for Cool Boy. No cap. Oh yeah, for sure! For sure! Like, fuck the Metal Garumon X. It's good, and I hate it. Tell me about it. it. It's it's honestly ridiculous. Me when I um, don't play good card. <laughs> okay, uh, for for those of you who um don't know, um uh, both up here in the VC um and in the chat, uh mm -hmm. the new Metal Garumon X um has like a when digivolving effect. So uh, where if it has Metal Garumon or X antibody in its evolution sources, all of your opponent's Digimon gain when attacking lose four memory. We have a limited card called Ice Wall, which does a similar thing, except um, it makes you lose two memory on attacking instead of four. Why put a, a stronger effect on a body? Um, um because Bandai, yeah, it is no longer because Konapko money, it is now because Bandai. Yeah, I was going to say, sounds like a move to get you to buy the packs more. Something that yep. Konami has dropped the ball on this year for some reason. Oh, definitely <laughs> about it. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, there's also something that I've super neglected to mention throughout uh, the past Digimon mentions, and that's the limited card pack. There was one over. In, there was one in Japan in. I want to say July? Yeah, July, which is all around Digimon Ghost Game. The reason I say this is because they've announced a new limited pack set, except it's going to be themed around Death Xmon. 
Oh, and that is a terrifying thought for those who Beta. play Digimon. Deco? Mm -hmm. No, oh, Death no. Xmon is like is arguably one of the most powerful cards in the game. Ah, oh, okay. Me, I, I played a thing in Galactic Mon as a one-off, and even then, you only need one for it to make a big difference. Uh, I will be able to back me up on this. Yeah. Okay, so for, for those of you who um don't know, um again, uh Death X Mon, uh when you would play this card from your hand, uh reduce its memory by reduce the memory cost by three for each of your opponent's uh, Digimon and Tamers. It it's a level seven with a play cost of twenty. So like a full so like seven cards on the opponent's field and it just makes it free for no reason. And um, it has an on-play and when digivolving effect, where it de-digivolves one, all of your opponent's Digimon, then just deletes everything um, that's level four or lower, as well as um, an end of a as well as an end of opponent's turn once per turn, delete all of your opponent's Digimon with the lowest play cost. Keep in mind, the custom uh, card design, Batman. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the card is in Digimon in Ultimate Cup format for good reason. Whenever I read a Digimon card, it feels like a custom card in itself. Yeah, it's any be. card I read, any card I read from that game feels like a custom card. No, mm -hmm. like, I, I, like, I want to play the game, but I'm so hesitant. Because of these like, custom card looking things. <laughs> Not that I blame you. Mm -hmm. Let's see, but, uh, keep in mind. this card, it wins me the game, it, it lets me call your mom gay. <laughs> As a Roar Knight player, me I can five, vouch. It gives play me on me mom, GG, shake my hand. It, it gives me 20 <laughs> bucks from your bank account, probably more if you lost extra hard. <laughs> why that, why man. does why does this sound like I'm I'm just looking at every Glendios? Try hard oh, when y'all say this. Because you, because you are. Trust me. No, yeah, no, no. I have never... T I swear on my grave, I have never touched... I have never touched the Glendios in my life. Not that I blame you. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't... Anyway. I won't even... I won't even go near a dragon tree. I may be a vegetarian, <laughs> but I'm not... Oh, and Rom and Rom kindly added the last section to that costume card, and then you have low tier God screaming in your ear, telling you that that you should kill yourself now as thunder goes off in the background. Nice. Low tier God can fucking yeah. off himself. He's a fucking bitch. I just love the yeah, um, around him, to be honest with yeah. you. Anyway, yeah, keep in mind. Oh, bitch. Right, keep in mind. Getting, um, anyway, coming right. back to the main topic. Uh, the next booster set f f for Exceed Apocalypse will be released in Japan on the 29th, and we have a ton of uh, features, including the other four digi destined with Matt, Izzy, Kari, and Sora. Seeing that they hey. didn't get their limelight in uh, booster set 14, which kind of makes sense. And of course, as mentioned earlier, we'll have the Dark Master's playstyle with Apokarimon, which I believe will be a secret rare. Well, it's incredibly likely at this rate that they will be that Apokarimon will be a secret. And of course, some other Digimon Seekers themed decks, as the previously mentioned BT15 Megadramon and Gigadramon, as well as a new Ryudamon and Or Ur mm -hmm. And lastly, we finally have some news on booster set. 16 it is going to be called beginning observer with the main theme beast based around the new zip digimon zero two movie the beginning there will also be a new keyword themed around dna digivolution which if i recall correctly is something on the lines of if this digimon would leave play play two of its dna digivolution materials from its evolution cards instead not instead but you know what i mean to replace it basically yeah. right pretty much and aside from that there's no other information on this set since it's yeah very that's early. A, yeah it is very early we only we're only like 76 cards in uh bt15 as of right now 
Wait, yeah, 76 we... hours and it's still too early? Yep. I mean, that and... was revealed, like, a few weeks ago. True, yeah, and we still need to reveal, like, I think one super rare and the other two secret rares, which, let's be real, we all know that the two secret rares are gonna be Metal Gururumon and Apokarimon. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. As, for the other super rare, as for the other super rare, who knows? Um, I'm still holding out on frickin' Diabormon X, but that's gonna be extremely unlikely at this rate. <laughs> Well, I mean, yes, uh, we have that Diabormon uh, copium, if you already can tell. Yeah, uh, the only other color we're, we're, well, the only other color we are missing uh, for a second super rare is purple. We only have one in the form of um, my oldest one, Ace. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, Not all the other colors. Yeah. Yeah, all the other colors anymore. have um, two super rares each. Fair, fair. Though, of course, as previous sets have proved, that is, it's possible for colors to not have two super rares. Just look at um, BT2, BT5, and BT13, because they had a white super rare. Oh, yeah, true. I forgot Yggdrasil was also a super rare. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> that is kind Wait, of... Wait, I think that's a... And I think that's our first uh, Digitama that's a super rare as well. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, that, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me double check. It is. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, no, it is the only Digitama to be uh, super rare. <clears throat> Next thing you know, they're going to make secret rare Digitama, and I and rather forbid that ever happening. <laughs> No, we already have a secret rare um Tabor. No, do not give <laughs> us a secret rare bitch, Tama. I, I I kid, I kid. Oh, am I? Okay. Mm. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, I that that's all I have now for Digimon. All right. Well, Tons real quick, the only Pokemon news I was able to find is that apparently all of their professional t tournament prices are going to be doubled. Uh, also, it's um... worth it. Also, meanwhile in Yu-Gi-Oh, you still have to sell your prize card and prize play mat. Well, no. Oh, in, apparently, in Pokemon, you can actually get cash prizes. Meanwhile, mm. hold on, I'm gonna say this so fast. Meanwhile, in Yu-Gi-Oh, they're giving you worse and worse prize products. They're giving you side sets now, and you travel 4K for an event, and you're getting a side set and a shitty dog shit prize card. And you can't even sell them at. And then you get back home and you got to pay rent. Fuck this game. Uh, <laughs> well, you said you already uh, quit it, so. I mean, go ahead, Lone. You wanted to say something. Yeah, it's like going yeah. back to the Pokemon merch. I was going to comment how the, they have um, Midnight Midnight Lycanroc theme um, Halloween merch. And the figures are already sold out. Oh. Because of course. Yeah. And the I mean, search are too long sad. Okay. Uh... Oh, yeah. Can I bring? Hmm? Can I bring up something about uh, Pokemon? Sure. What? Um, how did it took um twenty plus years just to make like some sort of series about uh, their card game? Um. Oh. You got me. What do you mean? I, just, I mean, I, I haven't even seen it, sadly, but... Probably because they just finished uh, the main adventures so of, like, okay, what we do next. Mm -hmm. Maybe now uh, anime just... about the board game. I mean, the original yeah, I... anime was about the video game more than anything, and it didn't showcase any video games. Yeah. True. So maybe they're just yeah, now they're branching be... out because their original version of the show is getting ready to retire. Yeah, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I don't know when the new one starts. So I don't really pay attention to Pokemon enough. Yeah, Pokemon Horizon um, is a brand new series, and it's been out for a little yeah. bit. Oh, okay. I'll have yeah, to pay and better uh, attention. they actually, uh, yeah, and the main character is actually um, Ash's daughter, I think. No, that's not. It's no, Vera, that's not confirmed. That's not confirmed. That's a, a supposed a character. 
I don't think it's been confirmed if it's true at all. Oh, it's not confirmed. Well, I, it's not, well, I wouldn't it's know. Not true. It's yeah, only rumor right, made up. More like you know. Look, what about the All right, well, totally um, well, that's really all the news I have for Pokemon. Is there anything new happening in Magic: The Gathering? Doctor Who. Doctor um, Who. Um, Doctor hold on, hold on. Who. Wait, 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 wait. Chill the fuck out. We had a, a level five judge pass away yesterday. Did we? Hmm. I need to scroll up and figure out who passed in that group chat. But yeah, we're getting the Doctor Who set next month. But we had a level five judge. Let me look for it. Magic: The Gathering. Okay, level Sheldon Mennery. Okay. Sheldon Mennery mm -hmm. passed away. Okay. Yeah, right. you know who that is? No, I'm just reading the title. I, me neither. I just started, and I'm like, he's a you know, level five judge, very high regarded at events. I and guess he uh, had a high ratio of being successful with his ratings then. I mean, I do not know what AG passed away at. I can look that up real fast. Well, but, while you're doing that, why don't we let uh, Connor talk about the new Doctor Who set then? Up and right, then I'll right. go back to mine. There's three new decks made with the theme of Doctor Who. So there's the Doctor, Donna Noble, and they've even adapted episodes of the show into cards, like Turn Left. Actually, I've forgotten mm -hmm. the post, but yeah. One of the new cards is Weeping Angel. Oh no, I've seen that one. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, according to yeah, Gloose, yeah. there were actually four new decks. Oh yeah, four new decks. Yeah. But Weeping Angel is a three mana card, including one black and blue mana. It's an alien angel artifact creature. It has flash, first strike, vigilance, and it is not treated as a creature when an opponent uses a creature spell and if it would deal combat damage to a creature prevent the damage but shuffle it into the library the opponent's monster what in the game what okay that is kind of understandable because mm -hmm. i'm getting i'm kind of feeling like the weeping angel deck is just several levels of gear chronicle bullshit where they're just sending shit to your deck well that makes sense Until when you, you know what you, when you know what the weeping angels do uh, so here's my favorite commander it's the one that lets you play cards off the bottom of your deck and there's a blue <laughs> card you can search it out and you can keep doing endless turns if you're blue deck that's what i would want to play if yeah, I could the thing cards. is yeah it does sound eh, until you realize that this is basically you know Pancratops? Yes, yep. it's, yep. it's Pancratops. It's essentially All you Pancratops, just have to yeah. do, imagine summoning it on your opponent's turn, and instead of destroying a card, it shovels it into the deck. Mm. All you all you had to tell me is that the Weeping Angels is just Gear Chronicle, but during my opponent's turn. Yeah. Oh wait, is this a com new Commander card, or just a new card card? It's different, like, if it's a commander card, you can put it, you gotta put it's it It's an artifact creature. Room. Oh, shit, fuck. Yeah, that's deadly. This thing's a fucking annoying. Artifact. So, uh, to conclude, fuck Stephen Moffat for blighting us with this monster. This is literally just the magic's equivalent of Gear Chronicle, I do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> hey, it's fine. Literally, literally, you guys want to see something that's super cancerous that I can do in Magic? One sec. Oh, he passed away from cancer. Couldn't find his age, by the way. Oh, mm. oh yeah, um, oh, something um, so that's kind of this, related this to is the... A uh, one, this is a one-kill shot and a 1v1. Also, uh, MTG um, dropped at least $250 in the last few months on this game. And this game is like, like, I'm going to show you guys the combo that won me a pod. Is this new? Oh no, these are older cards. Well, the reason I was asking is because we're talking about card game news. Yeah. Oh, card game news? Yeah, that's uh, what I asked about earlier. 
Well, for card game news for Magic, um, my locals, well, shout out to my locals for finally hosting the championship series that we've been begging for. Uh, locals are, I don't, over the last few months and this month, around this time between summer and fall, I, locals are hosting championship series where you can win $75 promos. And I'm just sitting there being happy. I'm not going to these events because my locals is doing giraffe. While the other locals is doing commander. And uh, like there's a lot of draft nights going on on MTG Arena recently. So hmm. Okay, uh cool. so was that all the news then? Oh as far as I know. Okay, then uh next thing on the list is card by Vanguard. Anything new there? Actually yes. We have a new Griffogilia. Griffogilia Varitex. Oh, yeah, true. true. Varitex. Basically, nom your planet. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you're going to raise it? Something told me would probably be all four, but where Griffogilia Varitex, he puts a, a order from outside of the game that literally says, kill yourself stab yourself to win the game. Uh, though, um, from my testing on uh, Griffogila Vartex, it's still a bit slow, even compared to, like, something like, like Zorga. Instead of, win instead of winning on turn 7, you win on turn 5. It's like no, it's still going to be, like, turn 6, because, like, as soon as you go to, like, the regular Griffogila, you're still just, like, swinging and removing, like, one order. Yeah, uh, and the... But the what Varitex does is legitimately terrifying. Yeah, but um, like, it, here's the thing: you run like three orders in the deck. No, um, Eshato Gui is separate from your is separate from your thing. Wait, you don't draw okay, wait, hold that. On, hold on, hold on. Let me specify. Uh, ride deck. Oh, right. Um. Yeah, I should. Yeah, that's just my fault for not being specific. Yeah. Like, instead of winning on turn 7, you win on turn 6. Especially if it's Dragon Empire, where you just restand mm -hmm. your... You, you restand your 20... Your 38k Varitex and your probable Varina Espiadera and... Oh, that's for Radia. And, and just murder... Like, as soon as Wait, turn how's... 6 happens, oh, you mean. murder, everybody dies. Um, yeah, I was going to say, how is Griffogila Vortex getting to 38 until I realized that it has, like, two effects, giving it a total of 20k? Yep. 20k crit 2. Honestly, um, uh, honestly, Vanguard's nice and all, but I've been playing Weiss barring decks when I go to locals. Like, Weiss is, like, super fun. Like, I've been barring the One Punch Man deck. And, uh, that's a one punch man deck, but the mob cycle deck. Uh, also, also, we're getting, um, we seemingly are getting Alden, which is literally just, hey, I'm just going to draw t every turn, draw two, and somehow a free, uh, a draw two is mid. Uh, what? Like, a and every I turn, draw two is mid. Excuse me? Yeah, um, apparently, Alden Alden's effect is counter blast one, soul blast one, call a card from hand, then draw two cards. Well, that's a pretty minimal cost draw two, I guess. And so it's but a the destiny but, draw every turn, something yes. like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this feels, and the main part of its effect. You show you show your opponent three cards with with different grades. Call something from hand that and then put something from your on your field to your hand, then call equal to or less call cards with the grades equal to then or less than what you what you return. So you do need to run a lot of threes in this deck. Not as much as Bastion, mind you. Yeah. But you you still need you still need to you need to balance everything out. Alden, oh, yes. 
Alden feels less unga bunga than Bastion. But oh, yeah, what it... Speaking of... Go ahead. Oh, is speaking of Bastion, I've seen what the new Bastion Accord, and it actually does top on... It actually has been topping online. Has been topping in Japan. Um, the new Bastion, it guarantees... Unlike the old one where you have to... You, you have to get lucky for a grade 3. Bastion's like, no, just stand just stand somebody. When I attack... Yeah, for sure. But you still have to persona... You still have to persona blast the, um... A Bastion to get drive checks. Um, unless I've seen, um... Of Bastion Accord is running four copies of uh, the grade 4 Bastion. Yeah, you still run the grade four Bastion. Yeah. And um during my testing of Bastion Accord, I have not rode um into um Apex Rule of Bastion. You don't, one. You, don't really, I, yeah. you you only really keep the regular Apex ruler just so you can just so you can um persona for Accord's effect. Yeah, no, Although, like um, Although like, Accord, thing, um, Accord, yeah, Accord does for like any um fashion and name. Yeah. Accord Accord basically prevents you from dying to Gandiva. Mm. Mm-hmm. Cause as soon as the Gandiva player sees the Accord, they're just going to start sniping your rear guards. Cause no Bastion player wants to deal with their shit getting Bound every other turn. Mm-hmm. Although Vermilion laughs at Accord. <laughs> Vermilion goes, What front row? <laughs> <laughs> what front row? I don't see any front row. I don't see no front row. Oh, you wanna you wanna recycle those you wanna recycle those grandeur edges? No, you don't. The, c- congratulations. I play I play my in theme macrocosmos and you don't get them back. You know what's funny about all of this? And the fact Um continue. Zorga The only the the only real the one of the real things that Vermilion has now is that we're just a grade one Hail Mary deck now. Okay, uh before you continue, Reborn, what were you going to say, Raven? I was going to bring up the funny fact that something like a Destiny draw to every turn in other card games is seen as, like, mid or just balanced, but then you try mm-hmm. and bring that into Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's just, it's just like the horsemen of the apocalypse are coming. Some dude's yeah. going to be riding his horse, horse shouting at the top of his lungs, The British are coming! The British are <laughs> At the announcement of that... Dude, in yeah, Vice hard, Wars, uh, a hard hard that is very important, Yu-Gi-Oh. In Vice Wars, yeah, like, mechan- I, I, in Vice Wars, it's a mechanical option in the game rules to do it every turn. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh, if you draw one more than one time per turn, that means you're yeah, you're, you're extremely powerful. You look at some, you look at a game like Pokemon or even Vanguard for that matter, and they'll just have cards where it's like, oh, draw seven cards, balanced. But Yu-Gi-Oh, if you had that, goddamn, it would be the literal apocalypse in this format. That's why they severely nerfed um, Part of Sanctity, I believe it was called. Yeah, yeah Part of Sanctity. Yeah. Part of Sanctity. Not, and they took yeah, the good effect Sanctity. and put it on a trap. A yeah, trap that like, you can't oh. even eat. Well, they took the draw six effect and put it on a slifer based trap, but then they they had like a draw until you have five cards in your hand effect and put that on a trap that you can't even play. Yup. Also, um, also on Dark the Silent Magician, um, it's uh, it's specific uh, spell card allows both players to draw until they have six. Yep. Oh god. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, it only works if you have two cards in your opponent hand. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to get the ball rolling again. I'm trying to say, sorry for interrupting you, Reborn, but I did have a question. Uh, Gloose posted an article about how Luard and Shiranui are getting stride decks. Yeah, the... The fucker is back. 
I don't know about you. Wait, Vanguard also has a deck called Shira Nui. Hold up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Here's no because Luard. You know, one of the vexing things about Luard. Like, why did Luard have to come on my birthday? Oh. <laughs> Wonder the day some, of by my the way. birthday. <laughs> is it? Is that? Uh, like I'm gonna sp- go uh, get more bait, please. Like, see. Wait, is that like a bad omen or something? What is no, that? No, Luard always. Luard has always been the beginning of the end for a format. Oh no. Uh, so <laughs> basically, I... um, Luard's whole and gimmick that... was um. Just basically, like, pay the cost of um, shining from your drop zone, essentially. Yeah, they offset the cost of playing its most powerful cards. It's basically the same as what happened when Dragon Ruler format started. The second those started getting really good is the second the game started to have a problem. And the new new stuff for a deck with these game-changing capabilities is coming out on your birthday. How hilarious. And I mm-hmm. am like, I, I do not want to deal with that. Fucking that just, Luard. That just <laughs> sounds like an elf and waiting to happen. Like, I'm going to go to my locals, and all I'm just going to see is Luard, Luard, Luard. Maybe you one again, to... Diva. Luard, Luard. Luard. Watch how they're going to make a. Watch how they're going to make a order that says grade ones can't go to the bind zone, and I'm like, well. <laughs> You go okay, to locals uh, to celebrate your birthday, maybe have a fun time, and pe- everyone's just playing that despite you. Not no, not just not just Luard, but we're we're just going to we're just going to play quintessential quintuplets. We're going to play the Stoikea version. Get four, get five drive checks for free. Oh yeah, and... that reminds me. That reminds me of like the whole like quintuple of quintuplets uh, like archetypes for like each nation. That's like kind of interesting. Yes. Uh, not to mention, yeah, not to mention like a whole the whole um, Morphonica. I think is what it was a uh, collaboration um, in the same set. Yes, and Actually, I'm like, think... okay, go ahead. Um, the whole I've I've told y'all probably heard me rage about how. How Dragon Empire has yet to have a restanding va- vanguard when two out of those bitches are restanding. One of them is literally Dragonic Descendant. Okay, uh, I don't mean to rush, but we do have members here who don't have a tremendous amount of time. Oh, right, right. Sorry. No, it's fine. I just I want to make sure we're all here for as long as possible until we can get to the end of the show. Okay. That can, yeah, that's fair. So, is there any other news when it comes to Vanguard, or...? Not... not really. Okay. Yeah, as far as I know, that's it. Okay, well then, um... Yeah. I guess it's my turn to take over, because, as it happens, uh... Normally I'd be talking about Weishwartz, but we have something that kind of ties between Weishwartz and Vanguard together. The Bushy Road Championship Series, which is their worldwide multi-event national tournament... Uh, international tournament, rather has officially gotten started and their most recent event took place back in toronto ontario last weekend and the winner was playing that time i got reincarnated as a slime which is a vast difference it should because they just got a new pack that gives them a whole bunch of new support uh second place was playing avatar the last airbender third was playing hollowed live and fourth was playing ironically enough reborn quintessential quintuplets oh it's weird if i if i hear those cat I dang. Are you still didn't... talking about Vanguard? No, I'm talking about Weishwartz. It's the other game that Bushy Road makes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, they happen to have yeah, a couple games... of sets that cross over. And uh, I don't know if this means anything to you, but the winning deck was focused on playing the quintuplet known as Ichika. Ooh. Oh, I don't know. Um, that one. I don't no, because each, each quintuplet does something does something either weird or broken in, in, in Vanguard. I'm curious, what does Ichika do specifically? Um, Ichika, Ichika literally throws a bouquet, kills something. When she kills something, she takes its power and effect. Ah. She's Imagine, a black widow. Yes. <laughs> like, she, oh, like, she says, 
kill something, I take its power. And well, I take any drive checks it would have. Well, that's I, good to know. Uh, this Ichiko doesn't really do anything like that, but then again, it's a whole different game. Scope and scale are kind of different. But uh, mm -hmm. continuing down the list, they've added a bunch of new dates and locations for upcoming tournament events. Uh, September 16th, is gonna, there's going to be an event in Austria now. They added another one for the 23rd over in Puerto Rico. On October 8th, Costa Rica is getting an event. Let's see, uh, October 21st, there's going to be one in Sydney, Australia. On October 28th, there's going to be one in Spain. November 4th is going to have one in Houston, Texas, and in Germany, and in oh. Indonesia. Oh, it, oh, I heard oh, Houston, no. Texas. I am interested. I'll get Maybe. you the information about that game later. Dope. Uh, let's see. November 25th, there's going to be a one in France. On December 2nd, there's going to be one in the UK. And they have... They plan to add Singapore and Vietnam dates, but they're not quite there yet. Now, as far as new cards that have come out for Vice Schwartz, they have officially released the uh, Nazarick Tomb of the Undead, or as we commonly know it, Overlord Volume 2 Pack. So that is officially available for everyone to purchase. I'm thinking about building a deck out of it, I just can't really decide which variant I want to go with. Ooh, I actually need to look what, at those cards. What does Nazarick do in, in uh, Weiss? Uh, it's a little bit difficult to explain because every color does something different. Red is basically Ainz and a little bit of, uh, is it Albedo? Yeah. yeah, it's Albedo. I can't remember if it's Albedo or Albedo. Um, green is mostly, uh, Al oh yeah, sorry. Red is Ainz and the Vampire Girl. What's her name again? Shoutier? Yes. Shoutier, I yeah. Uh, green is also Ainz, but it's also Albedo, or Albedo, and the twins, and I think that big blue bug dude. Uh, Kakaitis? Kakaitis. Yep. Yeah. And uh, the twins, I kind of forgot their names. But you know who I'm talking about, the elf twins. Yeah, I know, I know Overlord, I know all the characters. And uh, yellow and blue, uh, yellow is the creepy dude who could easily outdo Brock in the creepy grin competition. Uh, Demiurge. Thank you. And blue, ironically enough, is the heroes, which of course is just Eins in disguise. Yeah. Oh, my mom's son. Yeah, basically. Oh yeah. Now, um, side note, um, I do really like um, Eins's uh, knight armor. It is a very good thing. You're talking about the perfect warrior. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Love that fight. Love everything about it. Um, they have officially released all well have started releasing many of the cards that are going to be coming out in the spy x family set and as of january next year and the things they're going to be doing with this pack are a little interesting i won't go into the grand details because you know not everybody plays this game there's no sense in sharing what every card does but it does a swap system it takes it the theme of them being a family in disguise and when you go in for your finishing move, after you're done with that, you get to swap every single card in your front row with a different one of an identical name, as though they are back in disguise as a normal family. So, oh. of course. Something like that, yeah. So Cosmo, literally just, just in and out. Exactly, that's basically what they do. And of course, when you play each one, you get bonuses. You recover some health, you get an extra card, you get a draw, things like that. It's a pretty interesting concept, oh, no. but it's it's a forced win maneuver, basically, because the way it's supposed to be done is virtually impossible to do natively in the deck. You have to go to great lengths to make it happen, but then again, you got to go through great lengths to see them as a legitimate family and not a bunch of people who want to murder you, so it makes sense. Literally, everything you just said was Aqua Force. Yep. Or... Yeah, um, because literally, if you're just saying that, you're just, that's literally just Tetra Drive, but you're Tetra Drive with extra steps. And, uh, and except, except there's, there's a cute girl punching you in the face instead of a large dragon. Fair enough. Other than that, other than that there hasn't been any changes or anything. Uh, all the dates are still the same. So that means that we can officially dive into the Yu-Gi-Oh! Boy, I'm about to break loose. Speaking of Yu-Gi-Oh, there is something that I've found because be, I'm just gonna sit it here because we may talk about it later. 
Okay. But um, the the list for the Fire King structure deck got revealed, as well as some reprints, I believe, yesterday or earlier. Yeah, I was actually going to cover that uh, basically at the very end. Ooh, nice. I will look at that later. I know how you love you, one of your favorite uh, things was Fire Kings. It absolutely is, and for a multitude of reasons. Big chicken go burr. Basically. <laughs> now let's start with the Master Duel stuff and just get that out of the way. First off, they released a new ban list that went into effect last week. Where's our ban list, Konami? Uh, first off, <laughs> exactly. first off, they banned uh, the new Agito, Block Dragon, Tierlaments Merly, Bish Balkan, and Rongo Bongo. Yeah. Why was probably happy? It took no, was probably it happy about the Bish Balkan hit. Why? Why am I not? Why am I not surprised? <laughs> Bongo and Bish Balkin were, were a statement from Konami. A I'm straight well, statement. Well, Rongo needed to go like ages ago, and I can understand Bish Balkin because of the dumb FTKs in this best of one format we have here. The thing is, uh, there's a YouTuber by the name of Distant Coder or something that whose entire you channel is based on the that. existence yeah, of Bish Balkin, and, and I don't know what he's going to do now. Yeah. yeah, I just look at his Twitter as a, a toxic, a, a toxic master drill player. Even though he won't admit it, pretty much is. Yeah, well, what else is new? Well, he made a, spend all a the video time. about He'll the fish Vulcan hit. Um, yeah. Not necessarily towards it, as far as I know. Uh, but it is like um, a little bit of an aftermath. Yeah. I just look at Distant Coder as a person who's like who talks shit when he gets his ass like FTK'd. But he'll or or play something broke case against something broken. But then he'll obviously be I'm mad. I'll play the broken deck too. I'm like so you're the part of the problem. Okay, it so starts he... with you get you get your ass whooped by something that's not fair and broken. So I'll build it next to be run fair and broken too. Mm. And the cycle continues. Mm. Fair. Uh, From the very thing you swore to just swore, but you swore to destroy that. Hot words. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they also limited the new Kelbeck, Sprite Jet, Swap Frog, Brand Diffusion, and that grass. They killed oh, that grass probably won't be a problem. They just killed frogs with that ban. Basically. They did. And it didn't change anything for Sprite. Sprite even became tier, tier 1 now. After the last deck I'm that was busy. standing in its way, yeah. I think the Branded Fusion hit was made to spite Galzo specifically. Could be. Could be. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, they also semi-limited Blaster Dragon Ruler of Infernos, Luster Pendulum, and Pot of Extravagance. Interesting. The Blaster can directly go to 3. It does nothing nowadays. Yeah, all the Dragon Rulers can. Pro I don't know about that one. The Earth Dragon Ruler is the only one I am not okay with. What does it do, the Earth one? It's a re-summoner. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, we're no. not giving that back. I, I, no. don't, I don't even, I don't even think it's once per turn either, is it? All of its effect, it's a, it's a, it's a three or four different effects per dragon ruler, and each one of them is one of them once per turn. Okay. It, yeah, it's not completely well, broken. The problem is that when you throw them all into one deck, and you use cards like Sacred Sword of Seven Stars, and all the rank sevens that we had at the time, and that we now have access to, as well as high level synchros, it's it's too easy to abuse. I played the game when that happened. I've only ever beaten that deck at full power, or even at its crippled power, once. Ooh, what, deck, yeah, no. what deck were you using? I think I think I think y'all y'all bringing up my terrible childhood memory of the four of the four almighty dragon kings. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wait, Gors? I I played uh, Jurak Dinos. It was a brawler deck that happened yeah. to find the perfect way around them because they didn't try to affect them with the card effects. It just kept trying to brawl over them. Uh, uh, yeah. so, oh, so in other words, you just go burr. Trouble, huh? Yeah, Dino Dino go burr. Yeah, Survival of the <laughs> Fittest <laughs> allowed me to get into multiple. Uh, what was it called again? Uh, Evelzar XC's uh, monsters. Oh, that too. Yeah, they were out around that time, too. But uh, mm -hmm. continuing on, they have officially unbanned Girsu the Orcus Mech Knight, Ancient Fairy Dragon, and Nadir Servant. I hope it's... Does Ancient Fairy have the Errata? Yes. The Errata. Right. Okay. 
If it also... wasn't uh, with the errata, then we would have problems. Now, for Definitely. all those... Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Now, for all of those that were, were participating, the Dark vs. Light competition has uh, taken place. Uh, they added additional missions and everything, but from what I understand, it wasn't really that big of a success. Yeah, because yeah, it's well, literally, you're just playing. You're just playing more of what you people expected. Mm -hmm. Labyrinth go. Essentially, yeah, basically, yeah, it's like, yeah, labyrinth yeah, go. Basically, uh, let's see. Like, in, it's almost like in I, that kind of format, labyrinth would be dominating. They're all dark fiends. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 Labyrinth yeah. tier zero in that format. Tell me about it. Konami thinking challenge impossible. No kidding. Uh, let's oh, see. I the did yeah. Eldrix in that um, campaign, though. Well, uh, the tryout dual rental competition number five took place, which gave you trial decks for Chaos, Valance, and Draco Slayer. Mm hmm. And Again, they... Konami Go Burr. Yeah. And they also introduced a ton of new secret packs uh, Guided by Fate, which had stuff for Adventurer and Magic Key. Rage of Chaos, which had Chaos cards, Draco Slayer, and the Kashtira cards, and they auto -lit semi limited Fenrir down to two on release. Um, oh, wow. It's a start. Okay. Yeah, yeah, always it's a, a good sign. Pledge of yep. Sword, which include Face Knight support and Stealth Limited MX Saber Invoker. Okay. So, it was so random, though. Like, it came just like after. The first ban, like, this came out. Little that random. card has been banned for so long, and they just now decided to put it back to one on Master Duel. Yeah. Oh boy, that really might be a mistake. It might be. Last time mm. I saw that card used was during First Wave Medolce. Uh, me personally, it was uh, with uh, Goki. Right, right. That was oh, probably yeah, what officially got hit. Warrior. Yeah. That's I, thought, I thought it was Zoo that got hit. That I got don't hit, remember hit. anymore, honestly. It's been too long. Uh, oh, you're see. asking what got what banned? Uh, MX Saber Invoker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that was that was Zodiac. Okay. Let's nah. see. Because they also got Norden, they also got Norden banned as well due to janky instant fusion and in the fusion substitute plays. Yeah, I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. They could, uh, they could draw like a bajillion cards in one turn. Yeah. Let's see. Uh. Next pack was Blazing Warriors, which introduced Heroic Challenger support. Uh, Beastly Ooh. Claws of Terror, which included Scareclaw and X Saber stuff. The inherit and the inherited Unity Secret Pack, which was the protagonist packs. Uh, All the protagonist archetypes uh, minus, got their support. Uh, minus the uh, Go Rush and Sevens for those who care. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing I would always be curious is that will they ever? I wonder if they'll ever make like a master duel version of the Go Rush protagonist cards. Maybe. No. Uh, the closest we got to that is the um, Rush Duel Switch game. Like I would not mind yeah. like a. I wouldn't. I would not mind if they made. If they made like um. Like a master duel version of Udius's deck, because I see it playing a lot like um, Ten Yi or Pac or Pacifus. Maybe. Just, just instead of Ocean Dragon go Burr, Galactica sends you to oblivion. Mm-hmm. That sounds like something that could happen. Galact Galactica goes mm -hmm. Burr. And the last bit of yeah. And the last bit of Master Duel news is that they gave us a new solo mode for UA. Hmm. Ooh, yeah. Interesting. That could be kind of fun. I played game. it. It's okay. Cool. And that's all the, the Master Duel. is a bit lacking. I'm sorry, what was that? The prizes you get from beating it is a bit pretty lacking. I wish they'd give you more. I was afraid of that. Uh, That's most of the new story gate missions, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, 200 gems if you beat all of it. That's that's it. Yeah, I mean, well, that's just, the only thing I mean, worthwhile from it. Ah. Yeah, it's, uh, as far as I remember, it's like standard for all the gates. Hmm. I figured there'd be hmm. more. 
Okay, well, th that's all the Master Duel news, so now we can finally get into the real card game. Yeah! <laughs> awesome! <laughs> Alright, so first off, the, oh, new, really the new products that are officially available to be purchased. Legendary Duelist Soul Burning Volcano. I still, oh, yeah, I, I thought... still would want the, um, the, the salad stuff. The buying box is something I want to get. I figured you would. Same. Same. I was interested in the volcanics. Everybody's mm -hmm. in, well, except for one of us who is in, clearly interested in the boxers. Yeah, yeah I am. Two, two. Oh yeah, true. And and in my case, I just want the salad. <laughs> I, I secretly wanted um like the new Link Four to be a Link Six, but eh, it wasn't gonna happen anyway, so I just accepted it. Not. Well, if they did that, How it'd be completely worthless. How would you do a Link 5 in Salad? I don't know, you're the expert. Um, it's, um, it's called Dark Fluid or Singularity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what about Link 7? Let's not. No, okay, 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 yeah, okay let's, no. let's, not get, let's not get imaginative yet. Yeah, yeah that's what can always do. Custom yeah. subreddit. All right. I made a Link 8 before, let's not. <laughs> A link yeah, nine. I've seen I've seen pendulum links before in the custom card format that all went up to link eight. I, I don't think <laughs> I want that to be a thing. Yeah, let's not do pendulum links. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, next up is Speed Duel Streets of Battle City box set. I saw the card list from it. It looked pretty cool for those that like legacy cards. The only things that were really of note were the secret rare reprints of Dark Magician Girl and Flame Swordsman. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we've all heard about the Masterpiece series releasing a Platinum Dark Magician card, right? Oh, yeah. 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 It's available yeah. to be purchased. $1,300 a copy, one per household. <laughs> one per household? Okay. They don't want people stockpiling them, I guess. Yeah, time to buy two no, within one to my me. aunt's house so I can pick it up. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Speed Duel Tournament Pack 6 also released, which had ultra rare reprints of DD Survivor and Banisher of the Radiance. Plus, super rare Elemental Hero Nerva Master and Evil Hero Infernal Prodigy. Ooh, that's actually cool. And common reprints of King of the Skull Servants, Hidden Armory, and Lost Wind. That's kind of neat. Yeah, really yeah. interesting. Good reprints. Decent reprints. And of course, we finally got the 25th anniversary 10 Dueling Heroes. I, I actually, actually really, like, I actually made bad that 10 about it. for, um, no, I actually made that 10 for Beast Deals. Is it the same thing that came with a new uh, TCG archetypes of art, or no? It did, I was actually going to cover that next. Uh, they released three new cards, the new Noble Knight Field Spell, the, nine, the Time Thief Trap Monster, and the new Spiral Main Deck Monster. Okay, yeah, mid and <laughs> <laughs> like, all three of those like, are then... are fairly mid. But here's like, the interesting. Than... But here's the interesting detail that came with this tin as well. They gave four specific card effects adjustments to make them more identical to the way they work in the OCG. They changed the effects <laughs> yeah, for Shark Drake Vice, Noble Knight Kustinin, Dragoonity Sonatus. And Amor Factor Pain. Amor Factor mm -hmm. Pain's effect to skip your opponent's main phase one, if I'm reading it correctly, no longer activates. It just happens. Oh yeah, yeah, it just mm. yeah, goes like off. Like I'm just goes off. Like <sighs> that yeah, it skips your battle phase, doesn't it? No, it's main phase one. No, it skips main phase one. Even worse. Worse. <laughs> oh, so you can't even enter battle phase. It's so funny. No, you can still enter battle phase. Enter battle phase. You can enter yeah, battle yeah, phase without battle. touching main phase one. You just can't enter main phase two unless you enter the battle phase. Oh boy, yeah. I cannot wait. To oh, wait, forward. you're stuck in your standby phase? You're stuck in your standby no, phase no, and you no. go straight into your battle phase. Yeah. Unless so that battle phase is somehow. It, it, it's it, it's it's all fun in games until you use that ability on someone or until you summon that ritual, then use its effect on someone, they go battle phase, uh, they go battle phase and evenly match you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> evenly match. Yeah. Or play, um, Runix. Oh, God. <laughs> no, son, you all <laughs> It's like, you worse. deserve that if you make him skip Oh, phase God. Oh. 
that your end board is that ritual monster, then it's like, okay, a uh, standby phase, um, main phase two, runic fountain, any response? Uh, I <laughs> surrender. Don't they usually, don't they usually <laughs> have the uh, dual, dual terminal card that skips main phase two as well? Yeah. I'm sure oh, like no! <laughs> yeah, thing is, I, I play a Thunder Stun deck that uses that exact concept, except instead of Amor Factor Pain, I use the Burning Bamboo Sword. And instead of oh, no. and instead of terminal world, it uses that old trap card Thunder of Ruler, which skips your battle phase. So no main phase one, no battle phase, and because no battle phase, no main phase two. You yeah. just skip the turn. Awesome. I essentially like, just skip their turn. Beautifully, 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 beautifully terrifying. Yeah, I'm planning on making a video about that deck in the near future. I'm just kind of waiting for other decks to come up and be ready to be made before I do it. Makes Fair. sense. Okay, so uh, moving to the next topic, you remember that two-player starter set that was going to have this uh, comic book that's going to teach you how to play the game using more modernized cards and everything? Let me guess. Yeah, yeah. It's got like... the... We have officially experienced our first product delay in probably th two years. Damn. Uh, two oh, years? Wow. Really? It's a yeah. lot. We might have, have a structure deck like Reiji problem on our hands. We have not had an actual product delay since, like, the tail end of COVID. Yeah. And they have no, delayed actually, this. Before that. We ha And as a result, the two-player starter set has been delayed from October 27th to January 26th of next year. Yeah. <laughs> well, well um, they're trying to teach you Yu-Gi-Oh! in modern days, right? Yeah, that's basically what it is. Yeah. It gives both players a pre-constructed, pre-sorted structure deck kind of deal. And there's a comic book that guides you through how to play the game as though you're a part of the show, etc. I think it was. And thank you, Rom. You've been very helpful. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's been delayed by a good three months. What deck were uh, they going to use to show us? I have no idea. I'd have to open up the article. Card. Looks like the one of them card. is Nadium. And then the and then the new players just cry when they face up somebody with like full power chairman. Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so moving into some more positive topics, uh, deck build pack Valiant Smashers has officially been confirmed for release on November seventeenth. And nice. they revealed the Centurion cards, which are basically just a giant Gurren Logon uh, reference. <laughs> yeah, I'm, <we> much, <laughs> I'm apprehensive towards this Centurion stuff. Because the Love Centurions it. are going to get are going to be the thing that gets King Calamity banned. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I saw the Alexordio video and woofed. Uh huh. Incorrect. Um, Pums and Dragon will get it banned. No, but either or. But uh, yeah, it's. I thought we have to be... Either or will probably oh, happen. Possibly both. Yeah, because um. Crimson Dragon comes out very easily in in the deck. Yeah. I was going to say, any deck that can shit out to level 12 Synchros, including Crimson Dragon, basically can say, no, you don't get to play anymore. Put Essentially. Your down. It's, almost, exactly. it's almost as bad as so many, uh, I believe it's the ABC. Um... Buster Dragon? No, the Buster Dragon combined the uh, the original um, A to uh, Z X Y Z. Oh yeah, with Arm Dragon, Arm Day through Z, oh, basically, yeah. Uh -huh. A to yeah, Z, which banishes everything whenever you activate attack. Yeah, so basically, let's see. Yeah. Now for the one that I've been waiting for, Structured Deck R Fire Kings is going to be dropping on December eighth. Woo -woo. Let's go. And they have released Ooh. everything that that deck is going to come with. All the new supports look amazing. A new Garunix that can resummon itself and pop something out of deck. A new Kirin that's an 8-star boss monster and gives you zero turn plays. <laughs> and they finally yeah, printed it. that little chicken nugget that was seen on a lot of the Fire King spells. <laughs> yep, we finally got the little baby, yeah. Ponix. Yeah, yeah, and the and, baby... Uh, oh, yeah. And the baby searches, um... The new the spell the, shots. Yes, and which I kind of... The, the, the baby can also just special summon itself every turn as well. And return itself as back long, then. Yes, yeah, as so long as something dies. 
How many of that baby do you run? Three. Three? three. Yeah, that, that, no that, that, that's definitely a three of... Uh, it's a one-card combo. You're gonna, try and, you're gonna try and tell me otherwise? Oh, no, I'm not gonna do it. It's a one-card combo, and mainly for the fact that you also get a new continuous spell in Fire Kings, which plays the field spell right out of deck, and can offset the field spell's yeah. destruction to one of your monsters. I, I like how one of the extra deck monsters is Giant Trainer. One mm, at yeah. best. It's just, yeah. it's just funny. Yeah, just we got funny. the we got the we got the coach captain and the coach soldier reprinted, as well as Infernal Flame Emperor, which surprised me. Yeah, that is a little weird. Maybe Nobody they're getting cares it about ready. That. Yeah, maybe they're getting it ready for an upcoming reprint uh, in a structure deck or something. They also gave us a new quick play spell, which basically works like uh, what's the right way to say this? Uh, it's a multi-targeting scrap dragon. Uh huh. It's they, they, also, they they reprint they reprinted Dark Hole in this as well to get all the Fire King players hyped about Dark Hole Dragon. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of feel like the whole Fire King deck is just going to be nine, nine level eights, three new Garunix, three new Kirin, and three Dark Hole Dragon. You only need one of it because it can summon itself from a hand or the graveyard if any card is destroyed on targetably. And guess what Fire Kings are good at? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, and then let's not forget I mean, their new ranking. Yeah, that's right. yeah. how, how much of the Dark, rank 8 what? are you in? I think you run 2. Probably 3, uh, since my build's going to be running Xtrav. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. I, feel like the, I feel like the main deck level 8 Fire Kings would most definitely be 2 or 3 ofs, and Dark Hole Dragon as a funny tech to work into your rank 8 engine would be a 1 of for obvious reasons. And um, no. Um... Speaking of funny text, though, um, before before Fire Kings even got the new support, you know what's a uh, funny tech that I saw in old lists, like, ages ago? Mm -hmm. What? what? Um, what um, the Wicked Eraser. So, the Wicked Eraser, oh my God. well, it was, it was mostly for the final effect. For oh, you yeah. see, whenever the Wicked Eraser is popped by any means, it just nukes the field. So, what yeah. you would do is... It, it, the hand included, funnily enough. So what? what oh my what you God! Would do really? Is yes. So what you would do is you would activate Fire King Island, um, pop the Wicked Eraser if it's in your hand, and then that's essentially a full-on board wipe before you played anything else. It was Wait, a blind tag. Wait, Wait doesn't oh, Kokoraya um, do the exact same thing? More or less. Um, what? What card? Kokoraya, the Earth uh, Mountain uh, Immortal. Uh, Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. It, yes, it does, which is also funny. One, but... I do, one thing, one thing I was probably going to think of in Fire Kings, maybe, wouldn't trade in make some sense because you're running so much level eight? Yes, and not to mention one of the yeah. new monsters can resummon itself from the graveyard. Yeah. Also, yeah, yeah, I would enough. probably run like some number of trade in over ex extravagant. You could, but mm -hmm. I personally don't because extra matters more to me since I don't have to discard. It gives me a plus one as opposed to an even. Ah, makes sense. I mean, that's fair. Now, yeah. on the subject of eight stars, the last card that they introduced was the new rank eight Fire King, which made no sense to me at first, but then when you remember the time zone that it came from was kind of accurate. It's an on summon nuke, and it can detach the pop spell traps. <laughs> they have the eight oh, yeah, stars um... that can consistently get into it, so that's another win. Also, if it dies, oh, yeah, depending on how see. many... Uh, well, hang on, I want to say one thing real quick. Uh, okay. It also has the effect that says that on its own destruction, it can resummon any number of Fire Kings from the graveyard up to the number of materials it had when it was destroyed. Nice. So you just get it right okay. back. Mm -hmm. Now, what were you going to say, Ignister? Uh, one thing you forgot to point out about the continuous spell is that it also allows you to um, exceed someone during the opponent's turn. Thank you, I forgot about that. That's the whole reason the rank 8 is good, because you can play it during the opponent's <laughs> turn. Yeah. It's yeah. the funniest interaction ever, though. That's the funniest interaction to happen. Tell me about it. Your opponent, your opponent, try, your opponent tries to combo. Your opponent <laughs> tries to combo and you quick Xyz into the funny KFC and blow up their board, so they have to re-strategize. And I know Basically. nobody's 
and I know nobody's really going to understand it, but uh, Garunix and Her Eternity is actually a common Rider reference to common Rider O's. Damn. Really? Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, hold on, I need to look at the card um, closer. Yeah, uh, if you've seen the 10 years after movie for O's, you'll know exactly what it is. I, I know um, what you're I talking don't... about. Yeah, I haven't seen the movie, but yes, I do know what you're talking about. Okay. I just felt the need to throw that in there because my wife and I discovered that when we were talking about the cards, and we both kind of went nuts. Oh, hold on, <laughs> Karunix Eternity, you said. Is that the Xyz monster, if I remember? Yes, recall, it is. Or... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I did not know that it had anything to do with Common Rider. It doesn't. It's just a clear reference if you pay attention to how well, it's designed. Well, 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 well re that's what I meant. Clear reference. That said reference also has something to do with that, I suppose. Also, I did not know that they changed its name. Garunix what Eternity, Hyong of the Fire Kings. Huh. What about name? All right. Well, if you got to get going, Ori, go right ahead. We appreciate having you yeah, here. Yeah, see you all. See you all. Later. But yeah, uh, getting back to the list, they also announced a pack called Battle of Legend Chapter 1 Collector Set coming out on February of next year. Oh yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, they didn't give us too much information about it, but they did tell us that we're getting return uh, reprints of Number 90 Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord and Chaos Emperor the Dragon of Armageddon. Yeah, a, a lot of the cards that were short printed in the first couple of Battles of Legends sets will be reprinted here. Cool. And they also confirmed that we're going to be getting another chance at the Astral Language version of Number 39 Utopia. Astral Language? Yeah, I might actually pick up. I might actually pick an that anime up thing. My Utopia yeah. deck. And they also confirmed oh, we're going to be what? getting new collectible dice, which has Cyber Dragon, Judgment Dragon, or Elemental Hero Stratos on them. Um, Wait, I only nice have. Dragon Arch Hold up, I, I I have not heard heard this astral language utopia. What the hell does that look like? Give me a second, I'll really? find yeah. it. It's, really? it's basically it's like an like anime wild. type of thing. It's a very rare printing. It was only available in one pack set, I believe it was beforehand. Yeah. Here we go. I found a copy. Because it actually sounds kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. There I've you go. Never heard of it. Uh, me when I try to read cuneiform. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> and uh, keep in mind, the, um, the text is like the same thing, so like, if, if you memorize the effects, uh, then you can just go right ahead and run and, it. And this is mm -hmm. playable, Lord. It sure yeah, is. Playable. Damn. And the last thing on my list of new stuff to announce is that from the Phantom Nightmare pack, which we still don't have a date of yet, but we do know that it's going to give us official U Bell support. Uh, I, I feel, I feel yeah. like every, I feel like because it was called. And the U Bell set, support is amazing. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah like good. it's it's abusable with Unchained, and uh, I I feel like that was a given at this point because Def of the meta, whole because of the future set meta name. competitor. Um, I don't Phantom, know about that one. Um, Phantom, because Phantom it, Nightmare, it just sort of radiated a sort of um, cybernetic horizon feeling where it was like, oh, it sounds a whole lot like a previous old set, and they're just remastering it because cybernetic horizon, cybernetic revolution, or at least the advanced form of that, then we got Phantom Darkness, and here comes Phantom Nightmare. Yeah, I can't argue that one. Yeah. Also, why are you... Fire King of Bell is real now. I mean, it was well, before. That's, that was a that, primary that, way that, to play that, it. That, that, that's, that's been a yeah. thing. You Bell also well, triggered it in hand. hand. <laughs> Ten times Jaden broke the rules. Number one, committing genocide. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah that was the result of <laughs> you Bell's... That was the result of you Bell's most viewed prank on her channel, didn't you know? Yeah, I know. Yeah. And that's basically oh, yeah, um, everything I have for Yu-Gi-Oh. Can I bring something up real quick? Sure. Uh, so, like, on the topic of uh, the u Bell stuff, um, I remember, like, a long time ago, I've, I've seen a video where, like, you could just, like, turbo out um, the level 12 u Bell, um Ultimate Nightmare is what it's called. Uh, turn 1. <laughs> and it was all because of uh, the aforementioned uh, Fire King Field spell and either Wicked Eraser or Kokoraya. 
Yeah, that was really the only way to had. play you, Bell, at the time, honestly. Yeah, fire games yeah. helped it back then. I'm just but glad now. they finally got support. Oh Agreed. yeah, sure. and it's loaded with anime references. And it's very good too. It's good too. And, and also, you bell, you bell now abusing Super Poly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, considering um, like the anime, I think it kind of does make sense. Yeah, if you saw the uh, original Japanese version, it makes even more sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. I'm glad they put that much effort into the lore. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. do like that Yubel now has his own flame wingman. That actually reminds me. Somebody pointed out something, and I'm still upset about it. Apparently, the reason what? that Jaden's favorite hero is flame wingman is because it's a Yubel clone. Really? Oh think, of, think about it for a second. God. Think about it for a second. Think about it for a second. Half male, I, I know, half female, I... and when it battles, it does a ton of damage. God damn! That doesn't make sense. It was right there the whole time, you. and we never realized I it. Analogy. I hate you for filling my head you. with that. My God. No. And also, Flame Wingman was um, Jaden's ace monster to start a duel. Yeah. 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 His ace, his favorite, whichever one it was. Me yeah. Holy crap, this that... makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. Me oh, whenever, yeah, for sure. Me whenever, me whenever people say that Neos was Jaden's ace monster, I sleep. When, pe <laughs> me whenever people say that Flame Wingman was the true ace monster, oh, real shit. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. All right. Well, we've run out of card game topics to talk about. So, anyone got anything else they want to talk about, real quick? So, well, um, um, I've seen, okay, I've seen the uh, Nin no, not Nin Ninja, um, Hurricane 20th anniversary movie. Uh, personally, I thought it was okay. I didn't really care for it. I haven't it, seen it's it yet. Very, it's very meh. Um, but one thing I am legit hyped for: Buffa Plosion Rage, which is literally just Chainsaw Hand of Death. Yeah, they're finally giving oh, him the the ultimate form that he deserves in some movie. Yeah, um, yeah. Cause, cause the movie was supposed to bring up the fact that Ace could not get rid of Buffa's Jama Shin powers. Of it, course. it was literally, it was literally the um directors just forgetting about it. Cause it's gonna go into the origins of the Jamato, and I'm like, I'm hyped for this. I am curious. I'm, if you paid attention to the early episodes, the Jamato, uh, they had an opportunity for you to kind of pick up bits and pieces of how their language worked. I'm not going to lie, I kind of wanted to learn the Jamato language just so that I could use it with friends. Yes. Jamato, replace yeah, the... one letter and you get the storm that is approaching. Ah ha 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 um, I, I see you. what you did. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're we're all going to go to hell for our terrible humor. Oh, that reminds well, me, I actually. <laughs> that reminds me, actually. Uh, the first episode of Godchard is officially out. Oh yeah, I haven't seen it. If you happen to be I'm... a, if you happen to be on my Gilded server, I uploaded it there. I am intrigued. I have a, I have a peculiar curiosity of Godchard. I am very interested, the, too. One of the big things with Gachard is that he he's doing he's doing uh, cause though you know those those wild forms cause out of all those 57 combinations half of them only give him wild forms. Like only half of them will give him a proper rider form. Well, when that happens and when it comes up, I'll be uh, sure to pay attention to that. But as far as what we know about Gotchard from the first episode, it's interesting. It's an alchemy-based series. I'm not going to give any spoilers or anything. This is stuff you find out within like the first three minutes. It's an alchemy-based series. Yep. The enemies look to be Egyptian-themed, I think it is. I thought they were mm -hmm. Halloween-themed, truthfully. Uh, they look Egyptian. If you pay attention to the black and gold mantles they wear around their shoulders and necks, it, it's very Egyptian and gothic. I have. I'm still our second gun-based rider, and I just 
I just kind of love the fact that he just has to reload his gun by dumping cards into it. Oh, oh, you're talking about his... Uh, yeah, he has an interesting looking gun. Uh, it's just a giant arrow. He, he puts trading Basically, cards... Basically, like, what happens when you get all the bulk? I'm sorry, what were you going to say, uh, Raven? Oh, I was just saying that he puts trading cards in his gun and yep. wonders why they're all bent in the... And the sellback value is down. <laughs> this yeah. is this is hilariously true. Um, because his because every all the guys, everyone on the forums were cringing at the fact that his gun is going to mess up the cards. Well, if they're just blanks and he's got an unlimited number of them, I mean, it's no different than having the box full of common cards. God, he had an ultra rare yeah. grasshopper card. He can't he can't sell that back now. That was a $100 <laughs> card that he bent. <laughs> this, 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 this more or less begs the question of when, when is Kamarar guy have his own card game? It uh, feels like it should. Funny you mention that. Happen. Funny you mention that. They're actually selling different variations of the 101 cards they're going to have in the show. Really? Yeah. Like their own trading card game? I don't know if it's going to be a playable game. We do know it's a compl uh, collectible card set with multiple different variants of rarities, but. It might be playable, we just don't know yet. Because I feel like this, this should have been happening like uh, since, was it, a uh, decade? <laughs> since the existence of decade, this should have been a card game of Kamen Rider already. The, thing, the only thing is, uh, Gotchard's gun reminds me of that one guy from GX that fires his volcanic cards like bullets. Yes. Oh, the... Yeah, I, know, I, know, I, know, I, was I was waiting for that. I was waiting for player. that. No, um, okay. one thing, Players. one thing that the show, the show brings up and could, could legitimately make sense if they repaint the belt, the belt is supposed to be different for each user, so it's believable that there could be repaints of the Gachard belt, hmm. and I like that. He, I he like found it right there. That's interesting to consider. I like yeah. how they make make a reason for repaints. That would be kind of cool to see. Yeah. Also, the range. I think to... uh, when you're trying. Wait, to I think the normal... last time we have um, like a, a reason for a repaint was Bill. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, yeah, because yeah. Gachard is technically supposed to have as many forms as Bill. That's saying something, considering he had a grand total of 30 base forms, was it? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. so. Like, 20 bottles for um, each of the three um, regions? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if there were a total of 60 bottles, it required two to make a form, and two specific ones had to be matching in some regard in order for it to work properly. I mean, if you count every single combination, he had... What was it? Uh, upwards of 900 different combination options, I think it was, but only 30 of them were genuine forms. Yeah. 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 Like, Gachard is going to have um, 17 actual forms in the series, but he can go up to 57. Huh. I can't wait that. to see the, the, the amount of custom forms in fan art. That's actually the best part, to see, see all the custom forms are made for these shows. I cannot wait to see that. Uh, on the subject of uh, Tokusatsu stuff, though, um, if you are on my Gilded, I have finally updated all the episodes of uh, Geats on there. I put the first episode of Godchart on there, and I've gotten us up to episode 27 of King Oger. I still haven't watched it yet. I just put it on there to get us updated. All right, I, I was wondering about that, but... Yeah, I, thing... I fell a little behind because of all the crap I've been dealing with at work. Ah, uh, one, little... one thing I was always a little... One thing I was always a little curious about, because they said Daigo was going to come back with a, a, with a brand new red, red Gabori Caliber. I Which heard him... about oh, that. Yeah. I have no idea if it's true or if it's a movie thing. Oh, it's true. It's no, true. It's, it's true. Okay, it's true. Well... They like showed a like there's a toy of it and everything. I'm trying my hardest to keep myself away from the spoilers, is what it is. So I don't know very much about that. I just know that I heard about that. I assumed it was going to be for some movie or something. 
Um, as of right now, it didn't happen yet, so don't worry about the, like, spoiler department as of right now. Okay. But yeah, the idea is going to be that once it's officially done and we've got high-quality subtitles of the show, we're going to be throwing it on our little media unit here at my house, and we're going to just marathon the whole show. Oh, good lord. Yeah, we we watched up to episode 5 when we realized that we just could not stand waiting an entire week to see the next episode when there were so many questions left behind, and we just decided we're going to binge the whole thing as a big old, like, event. God yeah. damn. Oh yeah. Oh, um, I'm still kind of curious. Wait, hang on. What was that, Ziveth? I said mm, that is nice. <clears throat> well, thank you. Uh, and of course, once I can get good quality copies that I can throw on the Gilded server, they're going there too. But uh, I'm, uh, hmm? I, I'm still, I'm still hoping to see the Geats. Hopefully, we get a good quality thing of the Geats movie. Also, when they bring Geats and Gachard, I want to see Geats Oneness again. Just so that's like, God Geats. Like, Geats Oneness being his default God mode. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of what Oneness looks like. It doesn't look very good. It looks like they tried too hard. Wait, what does Oneness I thought it was look? okay. Uh, Geats Oneness is basically a unity form. It takes bits and pieces from everyone and throws it together into his suit and gives him a new upgraded look. It also they, gave him Mark III's legs. I, I think it's probably the rainbow cape. I did not mind that. Uh, hold up, hold up. I need to get a picture of this. Hang on. Okay, well, why does he look like an R&B lighted gaming PC? Hold up. <laughs> I mean, you're not yeah. wrong. That's one of the reasons I have an issue with him. It doesn't look good. It looks like they're trying too hard. I mean, personally, but, I thought it was okay. Ironically, Bujin, I would hate to admit it, but Bujin's sword looks 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 nicer. It does. It does. Bujin's sword is amazing. I mean, to be fair, Geats's final form looks better than this. Uh, yeah, Geats, true. Geats 9. That is true. I, I barely know anything about Tokusatsu, and I just looked at Oneness, and I'm just in my head thinking to myself, wait a minute, why does he look like something that Alienware would try to promote to me? Uh, <laughs> That's Raven, just saying something. <laughs> uh, you got that right. Raven, you are on my Gilded, right? Y yes, I am. Well, feel free to take a, an opportunity to watch the show itself from beginning to end. I've got all of Geats up there except for the movies. Damn. Yeah. Well, the, well one that, thing that, that's what I, that's what I was thinking of doing. It's like I, I want to get into Tokusatsu, so I'm at least on some level with all of you. And my exposure was to any kind, anything related to this was the Americanized Power Rangers when I was a kid, and I um, learned that that's not the original. No, it's a no, surprise to just about everybody when they found out. One thing yeah. I wasn't surprised. It made sense. But oh, yeah. I definitely want to. One thing I would definitely, um, I still like to see with Geats. I wanted to see Nago use beat and fantasy at the same time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> like, I saw the sleeves that empty. came with, I saw the sleeves that came with fantasy. They are puffy. They are big. If she put on beat and, and revolved it so that, uh, fantasy was on the bottom half, she would have baggy, puffy legs and a good old-fashioned uh, massive EDM system on her top half, and it would look so nice. Yes, oh, like, yeah, um, like but that, could be, seen... that could have been her final form, like exactly. fantasy. Like, imagine what she could have done. Apparently, it gives her the ability to do anything that she can think of or something along those lines. Imagine that being imbued into her music. Also, phasing. Yeah, that Basically, too. Basically, Nago could, Nago could literally just... There is not a issue... Although, fantasy isn't as strong as other buckles. What it's supposed to do, it's specialized. Which like, is fine. I don't need to, which I don't need to be the stronger. I could just... I could just fuse you to the ground and walk away. Alright, there you go. But yeah, uh, what were you going to say? Uh, the, so, like, by what I've seen, um, Fantasy is, like, the weakest of the four, um, final forms for the writers. Basically, um, yeah, because it's a one-buckle form. 
Pretty much. But uh, the... As opposed to like two or the other, so where it's like uh, two parts. Yeah, Geats had a two-parter. Um, Tycoon had a two-parter. And technically speaking, Buffa had a two-parter, if you count exactly what he was supposed to have. Not Frozen including the movie. Range, yeah. Oh, right. Um, Not including, yeah. Uh, I, I don't like Jamashin Fever Zombie. It felt very rough. Well, yeah, like, but I think it, that's kind of the point. It was supposed to look rough. I actually appreciate it more for that. Um, like, you could have a rushed final form that looks good. Baron Lemon Energy was a direct example of this. That's true. Um, yeah. But yeah, Raven, if you are interested in getting more into Tokusats, feel free to stop by, uh, message me online or something, and I'll get you as... Uh, as well versed on this stuff as I can possibly get it to you without overloading you with the information. I love talking about this stuff. We all really do. It's one of the main reasons there's a dedicated section to it in the server. And if you want any help or have any questions, just feel free to ask. I'll fill you in as much as I, I mean, can. I mean, the one question I really have to ask is where does one even start, especially when you have stuff like uh, Common Rider, the Geet series? Um... Okay, that's a very good question. It depends on exactly what your tolerance is for action versus story much so it's not all in like chronological order sorry guys i have to go my mother's groaning because she is hungry gotcha all right well thanks for stopping by man we appreciate you being here Um, okay well to answer your question, there is a chronological order to the entirety of the show. Uh, every single series technically takes yeah, part I after each one. I go to now, signs. It's not my topic. Okay. You guys talk about the past one I am already. I am so sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. It right. was fun. I appreciate you stopping by, man. Thanks a lot. Bye. Take care. See you next time. Bye. But yeah, uh... Every Common Rider series takes place in the year after the previous one. It's technically all chronological in the regard that they exist directly in sequential order from the previous one. Some of them even directly so, reference the previous ones. So what would be the first series then? The one that kickstarted all, all of those? Oh, God. All... Uh, sorry in advance, I have to go as well. That's fine. We appreciate you stopping by, and hopefully you'll come by for another one. Okay, I will. Bye. See ya. Okay, uh, the very first Common Rider series was Common Rider back in 1971, I believe it was, and it is very old, very gritty. I personally do not recommend you start with that one because of how old it is. That's something that you want to do if you want to really bone up on the legacy of where it came from. If you want to see what modern Common Rider is like, I would recommend you start with, uh, I'd say Decayed, which is the 2009 Rider. Uh, Decade is a legacy series that taps into everything that happened into the previous nine series before it and lets you see what those are. It gives you like a demo version of what it is, like those old demo discs you used to get in PlayStations. And then when you see them and you see what they are about, then you can go into those if you want to and take a closer look. That's why I recommend it. Yeah, and Decade's forms are very easy to understand. He's just using the past writer's appearances. Yeah. What was that? Yeah, plus, I think it only has like 38 episodes, if I remember. Yeah, but hang on. Uh, what were you saying, uh, Raven? Uh, I was going to ask, what was that one Tokusatsu series you like gave me hints about? The one where like they're all like an alien species of animals trying to blend in with human society. Oh, that's uh, that's Zooger. That's a Sentai series. Uh, traditionally, when it comes Wait. to Tokusatsu. Hmm? Wait, hold on. The Common Rider and the Sentais are different. Yeah, I'm getting yeah. mixed up. Okay, yeah. let me let me see if I can <laughs> explain it very. Uh, allow yeah, me to explain it. Sim- very... Go ahead, man. Beautiful but weird. Oh no, I was like, go ahead, Anashi. I was gonna say this is why it's a this will be a off podcast kind of conversation because now right. it's like this might take hours of your life. Right? It, I'm I'm it trying my hardest impressive. to condense it because I don't want anyone In to Halo. stick around for eight reasons that they don't have to. Tokusatsu is basically a genre of TV shows that were all made by one production company at its core that everyone recognizes, which is Toei. Hey. Hey, welcome back. Anyways, uh, it all connects to the Toei Corporation that everybody recognizes. The main shows that they produce are 
Super Sentai, which is what Power Rangers is based off of, and Kamen Rider, which is basically a one-man version of what Super Sentai is. Whereas Super Sentai requires an entire group of people, a single rider can do what they do, and is traditionally seen as being a little bit more adult-ish than Super Sentai. Okay, so they're, they're both a part of the same genre, but they're two whole different things. And they're not the only genres as well, but since these two are the ones that most people recognize and know, I'm just going to stick to those for now. We can get into the other ones at a different time. That's fair. Um, so uh, you're telling me watch both so I can be like, I understand? If you, you want saying? to, yeah, yeah go right fun. ahead. That's going to take too much time. That might take 20 years. I don't have that much time. <laughs> it could. <laughs> It could. I honestly may just stick with Super Sentai, given that I'm familiar yeah. with the whole Power Rangers formula. Same. That's even fair. Even if it Same. wasn't the original. I I'm still not going to get over the cracked out experience I had when I was first exposed to Power Rangers Samurai. Those two episodes. No, I hold I on. About. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Well, this is when I step in. Oh, boy. This is when Kenny the Caveman says, Nachi, get out the way. The people's caveman's coming through to explain. They literally made Power Rangers Samurai. Or the original one for the Super Sentai was clearly they tried to do it where it only could work if it was in Japan because you no know, samurai yeah. Molino you know, in it, the Japanese culture. It was they a... tried to do this. It, it just didn't work because the things that they were trying to do in the American Power Ranger Samurai doesn't make sense with us Americans. So that was like we're gonna do something where you guys can't do it because it doesn't make culturally make sense, which is true. Yeah, like yeah, like, yeah it, it I doesn't... understand. I and I understand that part, but the end result was just it was just something else. It was something like else. Like if, if you thought if you thought a rapping pumpkin from the original was absurd, then oh boy, <laughs> get ready for the literal monster that gets powerful because it told little Timmy to stop focusing on his dreams of being a pro baseball player. <laughs> that one hit yeah. hard. It's like shit. <laughs> If you, you really want to see something interesting, watch the original version that that show came from, which is called Shinkenger. It was a 90% script copy and paste from Japan to America. The only differences were uh, some of the were the names, obviously, as well as yeah. the story itself had some minor adjustments because it needed to be more suited to American children. And yes. on top of everything else, and this is the one that bugs me the most. They also took out a lot of plot elements, but they did oh, give yeah. us back the legacy character of Bulk from the original Power Rangers series. Yes. Uh, there was another. There was another episode of Samurai, the American one, um, that introduced me to two characters that I actually two two villains I should say that I felt sympathetic for. Mm -hmm. um, they used to be a. They used to be married, but then some Decker. tragedy ended up Decker's off of them. Shit. It, it ended that. off. It ended up offing them both, and they essentially made a deal with some entity to be resurrected. But the cost was that um, the husband Decker no longer remembered his wife's face. Yeah, like has no memory of her whatsoever. And I'm just like, dude, mm -hmm. that is just sad. He had the baddest. <laughs> he had the coolest looking sword, though. I love Decker's sword in his story. I'm gonna tell it's you like, something you know, about Decker that you probably never knew. He was already in a Power Ranger series before that one. Makes yeah. shit. He was the makes Red sense. Ranger from Wild Force. Is that why he like most of his sentences were just, oh, I've got to battle the Red Ranger. <laughs> yeah, he was basically yeah. fighting himself realistically. Um, <laughs> what do you think? That's although... why I tell people Wild Force was that bridge for us going from we're getting from the old guard to let's get a little bit more kind of nicer looking. Let's get to um, that. And just Storm, and SPD, and Dino although, Thunder. <laughs> one thing that a lot of people definitely know, like, I wasn't the biggest fan of Zeo. I wasn't oh, either. No. Like, Zeo itself was not a bad series. They did the best they it could with bad. what they had. It's just yeah. a lot of the elements didn't really make sense. Not all the characters were interesting, but the fight scenes were fantastic for the time. They were great. Ooh. No, but See, here's here's one of here's one of my sorry, biggest Nick, but I like that. Here's one of my biggest problems with Zo. What's up? The the time jackers. Yeah. I yeah, don't like that, it. Yeah. I don't like it when an enemy has an ability 
basically the only way to get the only way for it to not you asking too many questions like if they can stop time what just stops them from just taking the belt and throwing it into a river my assumption would be what? that the belt protects them but we have no way of knowing no um, no, um, no the belt doesn't protect them because if it if it did if it did protect them um they they couldn't attack each the time jacket couldn't just have the riders attack each other. That's true. Okay. I feel, um... like, it's, I feel like it was something like a uh, Kamen Rider drive situation where all the it does protect them, but like they don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think it, it's meant to do that. It's entirely Maybe, possible. You know. But listen, um, uh, it's starting to get kind of late. We should probably go ahead and end the show. So if anyone has anything else to talk about, real quick, go right ahead. Nah, we, uh, we're good. Do, I, I need it. I have I'm... one more topic about Power Rangers. It's you know what makes me sad that a lot of people didn't get to see Jungle Fury. I saw it. Jungle Fury. Um, I loved that. It was pretty Jungle good. Fury, a lot of people. I loved it. It was like it's a. Just because... because it was like an eighty was... percent script transfer, I think. Yeah, but you can also agree, I remember like, you look at Wild Force. You go like Wild Force is awesome. Then you get yes. Jungle Fury. You're like, ooh. I, I'll take Wild Force, but Jungle Fury has awesome ideas here. Yeah, I remember. Yo, we, 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 it was great. I remember a few years back, Nickelodeon did have a, like a full-on Power Rangers marathon, and that was in the oh, lineup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was also a part of my introduction because my cousin was really obsessed with the series and was hyped about it, and I had zero knowledge. That is, and I, again, well, before we go, everyone name your favorite Power Rangers. We're not, yeah, SPD. You can't hate it. Dino Thunder, was, personally. SPD was. I gotta awesome. lie, you gotta hate me first. I do. I, I kind of grew up liking Samurai, Power Ranger Samurais. That's fair. Uh, uh, Wild Force. Of course. You said, you I said Power Rangers is plural, and I was about to make a very. Dark Which one? Joke. There's like a thousand. You know, don't even do it, Raven. Just say you're <laughs> Power Rangers. We're gonna. We're gonna my, my, my favorite Power Ranger is the Black Ranger, played by a black man. Oh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, and then they oh, no, oh. then they became the leader because then they became the Red Ranger. And that's when we're like, ah, we had two. <laughs> we need a third one, and it'd be the Holy Trinity. <laughs> Anyways, Zelda, right. Ganondorf, and Link getting by. We got the three Black Red Rangers, <laughs> but then they were all Black Rangers beforehand, which makes no sense. You know? Yeah. You yeah. cannot forget who the Blue Ranger is. Blue Scottish. Ranger's the nerdy one, or the one who's like an asshole. The blue it's one's never a nerd, one or the buddy. other. No, like... remember in SPD, he was an asshole. Oh yeah, like three oh, yeah, times. True. And the like green one is either the, an the green one or a nerd. The green one is either the jokester or the epic badass. Uh, yeah, a little bit of both, depending on the circumstances. Technically, true. both. <laughs> All right, so both. I think we've officially reached the end of this conversation, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. we yeah. just need. Yeah. How, long, how, how long? How long? How long? How long has this been going on for? By the way, I can uh, the show is a whole two minutes. hours, fifty minutes. Damn. Yeah, we should wrap yeah. this up before it becomes three hours. Yeah. If well, it becomes three hours. That's when I talk about thinking YouTube or waifus and which ones you should watch. I need. Yeah. I need you to <laughs> shut up about that. Shut <laughs> up about that right now. I don't want to hear any more of that. All right. Well, well who said that? Who said that? <laughs> me. Me. Tim, Me. why? You're a brick. You should enjoy the thickness of a brick. If if you talk about thick VTubers, he's gonna make your next. He's gonna make you brick in your next Yu-Gi-Oh matchup. Oh Don't God. test no, it. No, he wouldn't. No, he can't. He doesn't have those. Powers. I will. No, you can won't. and he well, will. I... He can and he Man, will. I will. I'm... I bet. He has the power to make even the most toxic of meta players brick every game. He bet. has that power. <laughs> All right, Bet. let's go ahead and end the show now before this turns into a war of threats. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Thank you everybody for showing up for the show. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you everybody for showing up. We appreciate you guys stopping by and spending the day with us. We record this show normally on the first Friday of every month at about 5 p.m. Eastern, which means the next one, if it actually happens on time, will be on October 6th. So in the meantime, Ooh. thank you for showing up. We appreciate you guys, and thank you everybody for taking part, and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.